Welcome to Bert's Garage, a YouTube miniseries dedicated to building an exoset out of a fully functioning Mazda Miata. We're going to be pulling apart a 1999 NB and building one hell of an exoset. You guys better strap in and hold on. This is going to be one hell of a ride. And first to arrive is Bert, avid YouTuber and 3D printing enthusiast. He likes big guns and he likes to go fast. Hey folks, it's Bert. Welcome back to episode four, I think, of building an exoset in Bert's garage. So, I'm actually going to go over something really, really important today, and we're not going to be disassembling anything. We're going to be going over the wiring harness. Yes, you're all welcome. I know you guys have wanted to read a lot of information about the wiring harness. I had made a video earlier, and unfortunately, I'm not able to get it to work for some reason, so I'm going to shoot this again. So, do bear with me but I'm going to go over everything that we have removed from the car. There's a wiring harness that comes through the firewall. It's a big block that I will show you. It detaches and you can pull it back through and it actually is just, currently I'm looking at it and it's all wrapped around the engine. You don't have to unhook any of the electrical from the engine at all. So that saves you a lot of headache and heartache there. I know, believe me. So really the only things you have to rehook up after you get the kit built is you have to run the wiring harness, you have to hook up the instrument cluster, your lights, your grounds, your gas lines, and then pretty much your tail lights and your indicators and all that. And that's really it. And it's not a, it's not a super uh, complicated job. It's just important to remember that you labeled everything to begin with. Get out of your bug. That you labeled everything to begin with, and that you know where everything goes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my box, and I'm going to pull the wiring harness out of it, lay it down here on the floor, and I'm going to show you what we got. I will let you know that you're gonna see a lot more has happened to this kit since the last video I uploaded last week. That's because I'm making this after the fact because the video got screwed up, so I'm doing it again. So I've covered it with a tarp so you can't see too much because you will see it later though, so just be patient. So let's get to it. Now yes, you're gonna see that the uh, there's a lot more going on here than I've shown in the recent video, but I wanna make sure that everyone has a good idea since we removed the wiring harness in the last video. Everything for this, for the engine and all that, that's all still attached to the engine. This is just, this goes all the way back to where like the, uh, like here's the battery terminal. This goes all the way back. But you don't need to remove everything that's attached to the engine. There's no point in it. So we just took everything, like everything on the front there. It's all still attached, it's labeled. And once you get your exoset, you just fish that puppy on back through to the back and you're good to go. So don't remove the engine block wiring harness unless you're doing a complete engine teardown. We aren't. We're gonna be slapping a supercharger probably on this thing after we get it up and running, and there's no reason to do any of that, so we just left it be. It'll save you a lot of headache and heartache if you do it that way. Now for the wiring harness, there's a lot of things we didn't need to worry about using. Either they weren't in use when we took them off the car, maybe it didn't have the specific options. I know there was a, a dongle for heated seats that this car didn't have, so the dongle was just kind of under the carpet and left unused. So we didn't have to worry about that, obviously. So we didn't even bother labeling it. There's other ones for like your windshield washer bottle, your windshield pump, your wiper motors, stuff like that. Obviously, you're not going to need that. Um, you know, dome light, door indicators, the wiring harness going to where the doors would actually be. A lot of that stuff you, you don't need to worry about. And if you get the wiring tray from Eximotive, which I would suggest because it's $150 and it'll save you such a headache. And I'm not promoting that, their stuff. I'm just saying... I would highly suggest you get it because $150 versus the headache that this thing will give you is a good exchange. So with the harness, I have it laid out here uh, exactly as it would be in the car. And let me go ahead and show you what I mean. So over here we have the passenger side front going all the way around to where the dash would be. Let me move my, move my bench. So right there, there's the big rubber dongle that would go through the firewall. And then there's the, would be the dash, and then it's coming around over, oh, sorry, huh. over here would be the driver's side front of the car, going to like the headlights and that. Then you got the, like, that would be the brake, uh, e-brake thing, and you got the rest of the harness going back to the back of the car. Alrighty, so we have the wiring harness here. So first thing we got, and going to the front, and I'm just going to show you what it looks like again. So there'd be the dash, there's the ECU, coming up to the driver's side front of the car. Then you go back to the back of the car. So right now we're on the passenger side front of the car where the headlights and that would be. We got our side turn indicator. 
We have a ground. That is the symbol for the ground. I believe this is for the horn. Yep, there's the power for the horn. Then we've got the standard light indicator. I believe this one's the high beam. Uh, no, that's for the AC pressure sensor. That's for the fan for the AC. And obviously, we don't need those things anymore. Um, that's for the headlights and a couple other things. And I think this one here is actually for the uh, high beam as well. And then we've got a fuel uh, fuel relay system right here. And this guy actually goes to what is still attached to the engine, which is right over here. Um, I have this guy right here. I labeled it all. Hey, those three dongles go to this guy. You don't need to pull this off the engine. Just leave it there and plug it back in when you're done. And as we come back over here, as we're moving back, we got this big old block of rock right here. This guy actually plugs into this massive fuse relay here that's actually sitting just behind your washer bottle in your car and it plugs in right there at those two. So we got this guy right here that plugs into the big fuse box in the car. The next part is these two things. So we've got the windshield motor, obviously don't need that. And then we got the windshield washer pump, don't need that. We got these three relays here. And I believe that these are for, these are standard relays. And I think these are for like the intermittent windshield washer and some other stuff. They are, no, these are fuel area actually. These are for fuel. So these plug into this guy right here. Just go ahead and take that guy, take him off to the side, leave it labeled um, and just make sure it doesn't get damaged. Now here we have the giant rubber grommet. This will be going through the firewall on the car. So this is kind of a good indicator is where you are in the car now. You got a grounding plug right here. And all this crap right here, you don't need any of this. Um, this one here is for the door wiring harness, passenger airbag. This one is a ground, so you probably want to ground that. Anything that isn't ground, or need, everything needs grounded, put it that way. You got your blower connector, which obviously you have no air conditioning because in this car, because you have no roof. And if we come a lot further down here, we have this middle section. This guy feeds this big old wire right here. Now this comes back to two things. You've got your window, uh, power window selector, and then we've got our e-brake cable indicator so that your e-brake light shuts off. So there you got that. All right, so now that we've tackled the e-brake attachment and all the other fun stuff over here, we're gonna now move our way on over. So we've got this bad boy right here that's next in line. This actually goes to the engine bay and the rest of this is actually attached still to the engine. You didn't see any of that. You didn't see any of that. None of that got saw, but you don't have to worry about this guy at all. And then you've got this, which is a G sensor. This would have gone directly on top of that in the dash for your airbag. So that's right, right there. You got this lovely hunk of junk right here. I'm not sure what all these do, but I can guarantee you they're relays and they're important. So don't worry about them too much. Then you got these lovely wires that come off right here. Now these are obviously for your instrument cluster. Try not to screw these up. You're gonna want these. Then we're gonna come over here and we've got a whole bunch of stuff. Now this would obviously be plugging in a lot of this to your steering wheel. This guy here plugs into your steering wheel. This is for your airbag. This is for your horn. This plugs into your steering wheel. This plugs into your steering wheel. You got a couple different parts right here. I think this is actually for the, um, uh, the stupid immobilizer, but I'm not sure. I know these two here plug into the steering wheel, so don't want to mess with them either. And then we have all this lovely junk over here, which is for the immobilizer. Don't let the whole harness it confuse you. Once you get familiar with it, it's actually a lot easier. It's kind of like learning how to new use a new piece of equipment. It's, it's really not that intimidating. Just don't yank on this like an idiot because you will rip things and that'd be bad. So following the harness on over here, we have this big old plug, which plugs into this guy here. Now this then runs to a couple switches that'll be plugged into your uh, back of your uh, car for some groundings and your relays. I think this might get plugged in the steering wheel area as well. And then you got your OBD2 sensor here. This is very important, don't damage this. If you wanna ever be able to use a scanner on your car to figure out what's wrong, keep this. And then you got all this junk here that runs back to where your middle of your dash would have been. Here's your uh, four-way light, definitely wanna keep that. Power supply and a whole bunch of other things for your radio and your hazard lights and your passenger airbag sensor. 
That's most of this junk right here. You're not gonna need any of this, but we labeled it anyway. And then I can tell you this went to the back of the radio. As did that actually went back to the uh, fan selector because I remember that one. So a lot of this stuff here, you won't need. The only thing you really need to worry about is your hazard light and this ground here. Keep those, make sure you uh, ground that. Ground everything, to be honest. That uh, has a ground to it and make sure you don't mess with your four way here, otherwise your turn signals will not work. Now once we start following the harness further over, we've got our fuse box. Very important, don't screw with that. Now we've got a whole mess of wires coming off of here, which go to the immobilizer. Um, I'm pretty much gonna skip this part because this is just a useless hunk of, useless hunk of shit and uh, hopefully you don't have one of these on your car. Now, going over here then, we've got what would pretty much be underneath where your left ankle would be in the car. And then you've also got this big old rubber grommet here that would go through your firewall. Now following this back up, we pretty much have all the same stuff on this side as on that side. You've got some relays. This guy here says where you go to. We have you labeled. It says cruise control. So we don't need to worry about that, obviously. High beam, low beam selector, AC line. Don't worry about that. You'll recognize these two guys. We pulled this out. Doug actually pulled this out and put these together. We'll tuck these under a fender or something when we're done. And then we've just got stuff for, uh, let's see, side turn indicators, a ground. That would be our turn, ind another turn indicator light and front beams. Actually, I think this one's for the high beam, low beam. But then going on back, just one more thing. You've got your lovely, um, clutch thing here for your clutch obviously this green guy here is going to plug into your ecu the rest of the plugs for this we've left the harness attached to the engine so we don't have to make any more of a mess so yes all three of these plugs will be used it's just only one of them are on the main wiring harness now with all that taken care of if we come over here we now have another part of the wiring harness that's going back. Now this was actually running along the outside door well of the driver's side seat. You've got this dongle here. This is, I believe, for the heated seat. Um, it was under the carpet. It wasn't ever used. So we don't, we just have it labeled as, I think it's a heated seat. But regardless of what it was for, we don't need it. Wiring harness comes back here. More. We've got this guy here that uh, went to a broken, um, sensor that we no longer use we got another ground <clears throat> and then you got the back wiring harness buckle now this guy plugs in just like the one up front it's a big dongle nothing fancy plugs in here and this guy would go then go along the back of the the um back of the car and to be honest i believe these were actually for the um for the doors if i remember correctly for like the safety uh, mechanism this back wiring harness then goes all the way back here. We've got the fuel relay power line. So this powers your pump and your sensors and all that. This really just plugs into the top of your gas tank. And then as we come back here, we've got your driver's side tail lights. You got your thing that tells you if your uh, back door, your, your, um, it's either your gas cap or your uh, trunk is open. I forget which one it was a ground. Then you come over here, you've got another one of these. This is for your passenger side lights. And the rest of this shit here, you don't need to use, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. The rest of the wiring harness is actually on the car itself. And it's really not all that complicated. There's not a whole lot of switches and everything that... So we got the back of the car. The only thing you need to worry about is your driver's side rear lights, passenger side rear lights, any of the grounding wires, the attachments for your gas tank. That's it there. Come all the way up here. You got, you got um, a bunch of junk here that you don't need. A couple grounding wires, everything for your front lights and some stuff that plugs into the engine up there, obviously. Come over here, you've got your attachments for your steering wheel, for your wiring harness that goes to the steering wheel, for the wiring harness that then plugs through the firewall that goes back to the engine, your dash cluster, this guy right here that plugs in over here. Only thing you really need to worry about is your dangly four ways, because if you don't have this hooked up, none of your lights will work. Come over here. If you're using a regular dash, use your e-brake horn, or e-brake, got e-brake horn, 
e-brake cable uh, indicator here. Come on over here. There's pretty much nothing you need right here because this powered your heater pump or your heater fan and all that other crap and airbags. You do have a ground. Now all this stuff here is very important. This plugs into the fuse box. This guy right here. This here plugs into that monster of a fuse box that's inside the engine bay as well. This plugs into your fuel system uh, for your sensors. And then you've just got your lights. And that's really all you have for the wiring harness. It's not that bad when you take time to familiarize yourself with it, label everything, lay it out, get an idea of how it goes. And you'll probably end up having to do this again when you're actually putting it in the exoset for the final, you know, final install. But it's not that bad. If I haven't covered anything in this video that you are looking to know specifically, leave me a comment and I will be watching this video especially close for questions and I'll answer everybody's questions as best as I can. And if need be and I need to make another follow-up video, I'll go ahead and do that. I'm not expecting to get it perfect the first time. And you know, that's just the way it is. I'm here for you guys. So with that being said, I'm Bert from Pixel Armory. Like, favorite, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. If you like Pixel Armory and the content we make, feel free to become a Patreon subscriber and support us just like our good friend Patrick. 